take sips of this pure wine. Take sips of this pure wine being poured. Don't mind that you have been given a dirty cup. Friends, once upon a time, there was a wealthy merchant who owned all the things that money could buy, but was still deeply unhappy. He had tried all the remedies suggested by the wise men, the fakirs and the saints, yet nothing seemed to work. His dissatisfaction was increasing day by day. Now, he was even ready to part with all his money, with all his wealth, if only someone could help him find happiness. He started moving from town to town, seeking that elusive person who could guide him, who could put an end to his misery. With him at all times, he now carried a bag full of diamonds and rubies to reward the person who could tell him the secret to happiness. But no one could be found. No one could help him. Then in one of the towns, a madman called him once and said, I've heard you're looking for happiness. Do you know what? I can guide you to the person who can make you very happy. Ah, the wealthy merchant looked at the madman in disbelief, but finally thought to himself, I have listened and followed the advice of a lot of intelligent people and yet not found happiness. So why not try the advice of this madman also? He didn't have a lot of options. So he listened to the madman. The madman suggested visiting Mullah Nasruddin, a Sufi fakir who lived in a village nearby. When the merchant reached his address, Mullah Nasruddin was sitting on the branch of his favorite tree on the outskirts of the village. I've heard you're the man who can give me the secret of happiness, asked the merchant with a glimmer of hope in his eyes. Am I? said Nasruddin. What is that bag that you're holding close to your chest? he asked. Oh, this, it's my life's earnings. Rubies and diamonds and precious jewels that I will give to the man who can tell me the secret to happiness. Now tell me, can you help me or not? Nasruddin smiled from top of the tree and said, Sir, I can not only give you the secret of happiness, but I can deliver happiness to you. Please make yourself comfortable while I climb down from the tree. The merchant found Nasruddin's confident tone very assuring and was relieved that he had come to the right place. As the merchant was about to sit down, Mullah Nasruddin swiftly climbed down from the tree, snatched the bag of jewels from the hands of the merchant and ran away. The merchant was shocked by the sudden turn of events and started chasing Mullah Nasruddin. Thief, robber, he said. He's taken my life's earnings. Someone go catch him. Nasruddin was well acquainted with the village. It was his village after all. So he ran ahead while the unhappy man chased him. It was quite a funny sight. With the nimble sage running ahead, with the treasure bag in his hands, while the obese merchant chased him, making an unsuccessful attempt to catch him. The villagers also joined the pursuit and it was quite a scene. Sufis don't run away with other people's money. He must be up to something, said one villager to another. After making him run for some time, Mullah Nasruddin disappeared into the narrow alleys of his old village. Helpless, the unhappy merchant returned to where he had left his horse and started wailing. I've lost all my life's earnings and I am more unhappy now. Earlier, I at least had the money. Now I neither have the money nor happiness. The hours passed by, the sun was about to set and the merchant couldn't stop sobbing. What am I going to tell my family that I listened to the advice of a crazy man? He cried. Just before sunset, just before sunset, Mullah Nasruddin returned to the same spot and threw the bag full of jewels toward the merchant. Here is your treasure. I don't need it. The merchant quickly sprang to his feet and picked up the bag. Very enthusiastically, he opened it and breathed a sigh of relief on finding all the precious jewels intact. The merchant was a changed man. Nasruddin could see his face radiating peace and joy.
Are you happy now? Asked Nasruddin. With tears flowing down his eyes, the merchant replied, I have never been happier. I have never been happier as he was clinging to his precious jewels as diamonds and rubies. Appreciate what you have and you will never be unhappy again, said Nasruddin. This is the secret to happiness. Beautiful short story, isn't it? You see, the rich man hadn't technically gained anything. He went with a bag full of riches and he returned with the same bag. He had only lost it temporarily and yet he was happier now than ever before because in the process of losing and finding it back, he had gained something that would be the permanent cure of his misery. He had gained a new perspective, a perspective that allowed him to temporarily experience the pain of losing everything and then experiencing the gratitude for what he already had, for rediscovering what he already had. In the process, he had learned that happiness lies in developing an attitude of gratitude, one of the most powerful, therapeutic and nourishing emotions known to humans. Gratitude, thankfulness, shukar guzari. You see, my friends, people who practice gratitude are not ignoring reality or burying their heads in the sand. Instead, they appreciate and offer thanks for what's working well in their lives while they strengthen themselves for their challenges. Gratitude doesn't weaken you. It strengthens you by putting you in sync with the positive aspects of your life. Here's the root cause of all human misery, in my belief. We underestimate our gifts and overestimate our challenges. That's the root cause. We underestimate our gifts and overestimate our challenges. And this mindset results in an overall negative perspective about life. Thankfully, we can reverse it. We can reverse it through the process of gratitude, by practicing gratitude. And no, like our merchant in the story, you don't need to lose what you already have in order to appreciate it. You just need to pause for a while, breathe in deeply, and count your blessings. The other day I posted a picture on social media of my morning espresso with a home-baked cake in the beautiful Punjabi spring weather. And one of the comments underneath the photograph went something like this. Samajit, life for you seems perfect. To which my response was, yes it does, but only on social media, right? I put the wink wink emojis next to it. My life is perfect only on social media. Reality is different. I have my own set of challenges, less just like all of you. But that shouldn't stop me or that shouldn't stop you from appreciating the gifts that we all have been blessed with. I leave you with this quote by the Sufi master Rumi who said, take sips of this pure wine. Take sips of this pure wine being poured. Don't mind that you have been given a dirty cup. Take sips of this pure wine being poured. Don't mind that you've been given a dirty cup. Pause, reflect, and feel the gratitude for all the good things in your life. So here's a little gratitude exercise that I'd like to share with you as we close this video. Sit in a comfortable place, put on your favorite piece of music, take a sheet of paper and a pen or pencil, and for the next 10 minutes, just write down all the things in your life that you're truly grateful for. Small or big, doesn't matter, right? Write down about the, the people that you're thankful for, the opportunities that you're blessed with, the resources that you have. Don't focus on what's missing. Those things will come to your mind. Your job is to tune into the abundance that is already there. Your job is to tune into the, the blessings that you already have. Write them down and then spend the next five minutes reading and rereading this list as you allow your body and your mind to fill up with this feeling of gratitude. Get drunk on gratitude. This is a powerful exercise and if you do it every day as a matter of habit for the next 30 days, you will not need to sit down with a pen and paper anymore. It will become an automatic habit. It will become a way of life. 
I hope this activity helps and in the comments I welcome you all to share the things that you feel uh, you are most thankful for in your life. Let's get a conversation started in the comments. Thank you once again.